In this video, I'm going to teach Mac users how to play music in a Zoom meeting while you speak and make both sound good at the same time. Stick around. If you've seen my previous videos and found them helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and be sure to click on the all option when you subscribe. Now, a number of people who are fitness instructors, gym coaches, yoga instructors, and dance instructors reached out to me after watching my video on how to get better Zoom audio and asked the question, how do I play music and talk so that my audience can hear both clearly? Now, if you're in this group of coaches and trainers, please let me know in the comment section below because this video is specifically for you. Well, I didn't know how to answer that question, so I did some research and I figured out two different solutions that work well. The first uses software on your Mac, while the second uses some hardware. I'm going to make a different video about the hardware solution, but for today, I'm going to focus only on the software solution. The basic principle remains the same between the two, regardless of what solution you choose, and that is to combine two separate audio signals. The first, your voice, and the second, your music, and present that combined signal as an audio input to Zoom. The software that lets you do that is called Loopback, and it's made by a company called Rogue Amoeba. That's a really cool name, by the way. I have no affiliation with the company, nor am I getting anything in exchange for this recommendation. It's just the best solution that I've found so far. Now, what do I mean by best? Well, it works reliably, for one, and it's easy to set up and use. It also happens to have a great user interface, which I personally value in software. The downside is that the software costs $99, but I managed to find a coupon code online which you can apply to take 15% off your purchase. I've listed it in the description. The cool thing is that you can run a 20 minute trial just like I did to test the software before you commit to purchasing. In the interest of full disclosure, I did not buy the software myself, but that's only because I have the hardware that I need to accomplish the same outcome. If I didn't, I would make the investment in this software because it's really that good. And I think that it'll solve many people's problems. Now, let's get to the meat of the video. First of all, you'll need to download and install the software. I've provided the link to the software in the description. Now, once you download it and install it, it's time to take it for a spin. When you first launch the software, you should see this screen. On the left, you'll see what's called a virtual device. What that means is that you're making a new device with an audio input and an audio output. If you don't see this virtual device on the left of your screen, click on the new virtual device link on the bottom left of the window to create one. You'll see the words loopback audio at the top on the right side of the window. That's the name of the virtual device, which you will need to remember later. Now, I recommend calling it something descriptive, such as music and voice for Zoom, because you'll be using it later and it'll be helpful to call it something more obvious. This pass-through window needs to be present for all of this to work, so don't touch it. Next, you'll want to add the two audio signals that you need. The first is the music input, and the second, the microphone input. I'll start by adding iTunes as an audio source so I can play music from my library. Now, I do that by clicking on the plus sign right by Sources, then on the Select Application and choosing iTunes. You might use a different app for your music, so if your music player is already listed in the, in the drop-down menu, you can simply click it right away without having to click on Select Application. But if not, you'll have to go through the same steps. Just select Application and look for your music app. I've set up iTunes as a music source, and now I want to add my second audio source, which is the input from my microphone. Now, click on the plus sign again for sources, and look at the list of audio devices at the bottom. If you have a USB microphone, you'll see it listed here. I've chosen the Samsung Go Mic, which is my nifty little USB microphone. You should see the brand and model of the mic that you use here. Now, if you don't have an external microphone, you can select the built-in microphone option. I happen to also have an external microphone plugged in here, which is why the label looks slightly different. Pay no attention to the label. This is the microphone that is in your computer. 
Now I'm going to take a step back and look at things from a higher level. What I've done is to combine both the audio from my music source, in this case iTunes, with the audio from my microphone. Loopback is the software that combines those two audio signals together. An important thing to note at this point is that the combined audio signal is a virtual output right now, meaning it's, it's not actually going to anything at the moment, so you don't hear the combined signal on your headphones or speakers, at least not yet. To hear that combined signal, you'll have to set up a monitor. The monitor here doesn't refer to your display or screen, but rather the device you use to listen to the audio. Now, to send the combined audio signal to a monitor so you, that you can hear it, click on the plus sign by the monitor section. You can add your computer's speakers here, or if you have an audio interface that you use to connect to a pair of external speakers like me, you can select that. If you choose the internal speakers and you have a pair of headphones connected or a, uh, an external speaker connected, you'll hear the audio on your headphones or on those speakers. When you're done with the step, all that's left to do is to set the levels. Setting the levels means adjusting the volume of both the music and your mic so that the combined sound that comes out is balanced. You don't want the music to be too loud or too soft in relation to your voice. To do this, toggle the options in both your music source and mic source. You'll see the volume or level control button here. I would advise lowering the volume of the music input to 15-20% to 20 to start off with then play music in your music source, speak into your microphone, and listen to the sound that comes out. Make adjustments to the volume of each until you're happy with how everything sounds. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Now once you're done, start Zoom, Choose Preferences, click on Audio, and in the Microphone Options section, select the name you used earlier for your virtual device. In my case, I select Music and Voice for Zoom. Now, if you didn't cho change the name, then you would choose Loopback here. Uh, or if you did change your name, you hopefully will remember what it is and select that. Play your music, then click on Test Mic and speak into your microphone. Zoom will record a few seconds of your audio, then play it back. If everything sounds good, you're all set. If the voice or the music is too loud, go back to loopback and adjust the volume of the music player or the mic and test the mic again in Zoom. Repeat the steps until you're happy. Now, all that's left to do is to run your next Zoom session and show off your new improved audio. I've tested the setup with Zoom, Google Meet, and Skype so far, and it works on all these platforms. Now, some quick notes. The trial is great for getting familiar with the platform, setting things up, and doing some testing. The software developers have done a really wonderful job of giving you enough time to get things to a point where you want them to be. After 20 minutes, though, the software spits out mm, some pretty horrendous noise, which renders your audio intolerable. The good thing is that you just have to quit the software and run it again to play around with it some more. By this time though, you should already know if this piece of software can be helpful to you in your business and if it's worth the investment. Again, if you decide to purchase a license, I found a coupon code online which will give you 15% off and it's listed in the description of the video. I don't get a single cent from this recommendation but I'm always glad to recommend products that both work well and that are beautiful to look at and use. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and be sure to get subscribed to all notifications. If you're curious about what devices or equipment you could use for better audio, check out this other video of mine where I discuss better audio for Zoom. I've provided some links below for audio gear that I personally recommend. Now, I want to be clear, these are affiliate links and if you decide to purchase any of these pieces of audio, audio gear, I hope you'll consider using these links because it doesn't cost you anything extra and sends me a little money so that I can find the time to continue making more helpful content. In the next video, I'll show you how to play music and speak clearly in Zoom by using a hardware-based solution. And the video after that will be on how to get 
much better video quality on Zoom. Till then, see you soon. Bye.